right, welcome back. I'm going to continue on the reading of um, Fred Hampton. Um, I was interrupted, so I got to go back through. And so I rushed on, so I didn't put on my sound effects or my regular intro, but I have a going on Uber conference. So anybody that wants to kind of um, talk with me about some of the stuff, because some pertinent stuff that, that Fred Hampton said back in 1969 that we really got to start thinking about. Um, uh, so in those that are maybe interested, 614-556-4535. This is the line, and it's open all the time. So even if you get, um, you listen to this in the podcast and you pick up on it late, you can still call in online. Um, I or somebody else will answer. And if you just want to go and do your rant, you can do your rant. You want to share your opinion, you can share your opinion. If you want to have a discussion, if I'm available, you can have your discussion. All right? So let's go on. And, and and keep it moving. All right, so first I want to make sure that the Uber conference is going and that I'm recording. Now, there we go. So now I can hear myself, but hopefully those can uh, those people can hear me. I, I can't test it, but I'm going to have somebody test it out for me. So we on Spreaker and Uber conference at the same time. I'm going live for the very first time, so I got Spreaker going. Unfortunately... People can hear me talking, right? But you can't really interact with the show. So people more than likely won't be able to hear you if you call in on Uber. But I can go on and translate that until I'm able to get both of them working seamlessly together. I'm working on getting that together for you as we speak. Now, I'm going to take a couple of seconds and I'm going to share on Facebook that I'm going live. You know what I'm saying? And I let people know that they can hit, hit me up at... Uh, Hit me up and listen as well as comment on the speech. All right, so we're about to get it started, and we're going to try to, we're going to make it through. All right, so now I have to go to, so what I'm going to do is go on Uber Conference, and I'm going to share the screen on Uber Conference. So those that um, are, are on Uber conference, hopefully people how to do a podcast. Got to always have my show effects, right? So, and then also I want to have my nice explosion. Switch it over. I hear something in the background. I don't know whether it's somebody on or, or whatever. But I'm about to go over and let y'all know. First, I need to let y'all know. You are now listening to Giami Journey Radio. This is a Heart of a Symbol production. Where we strive to blow up your old paradigms. So leaving off from where we were with Fred Hampton, right? Man, like I said, I've been reading some of these ancestors, man, and and, and 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 it's still pertinent. So we need to really start discussing some of the stuff they were saying, and we need to take what they were saying and what they were trying to do to another level. So I'm, I'm going, I'm starting. Again, it's like a lot of us running around talking about politics don't even know what politics is. Did you ever see something and pull it, and you take it as far as you can, and it almost outstretches itself and goes into something else? If you take it so far, that is two things. As a matter of fact, some things, if you stretch it so far, it'll be another thing. Did you ever cook something so long that it turns into something else? Ain't that right? That's what we're talking about with politics. That politics ain't nothing. But if you stretch it so long that it can't go no further, 
then you know what you got on your hands. You got an antagonistic co contradiction. And when you take that contradiction to the highest level and stretch it as far as you can stretch it, you got what you call war. Politics is war without bloodshed, and war is politics with bloodshed. If you don't understand that, you can be a Democrat, Republican, you could be an independent, you could be anything you want, want to, you ain't nothing. We don't want any of those niggers and any of these hunkies and nobody else, radicals or nobody, talking about I'm on the independence ticket. That means you sell out the Republicans. Independence means you're out for graft and you'll sell out to the highest bidder. You understand? We want people who want to run on the people's party because the people are going to run it whether they like it or not. The people have approved that have proved that they can run it. They run it in China. They're going to run it right here. They can call it what they want to. They can talk about it. They can call it communist and think that it's going to scare somebody, but it ain't going to scare nobody. We had something happen on 37th Road. They came out to 37th Road where our breakfast for children program is and started getting those women who were kind of older, around 58, that that's, you know, I call that older because I'm young. I ain't 20, right? Right? But you see, they're going to get them and brainwash them. And you ain't seen nothing till you've seen one of them beautiful sisters with their hair kind of starting to get gray. And they ain't got many teeth. And they were tearing them policemen up. They were tearing them up. The pigs would come up to them and say, you like communism? The pigs would... Um, would come up to them and say, you scared of communism? And the sisters would say, no scared of it. I ain't never heard of it. You like socialism? No scared of it. I, I ain't never heard of it. The pigs, then, the, the pigs, they be cracking up because they enjoy seeing these people frightened of these words. You like capitalism? Yeah, well, that's what I live with. I like it. You like the breakfast for children program, nigga? Yeah, I like it. And the pigs say, oh, oh, the pigs say, well, the breakfast for children program is a socialistic program. It's a communistic program. And the woman said, well, I tell you what, boy, I've been knowing you since you were knee high to a grasshopper, nigga. And I don't know if I like communism. And I don't know if I like socialism. But I know that the breakfast for children program feeds my kids, nigga. And if you put your hands on the breakfast for children program, I'm going to come off this can and I'm going to beat your ass like like a blank that's what that's what they that's what they be saying that's what they be saying and it is a beautiful thing and that's what the breakfast for children program is a lot of people think it is charity but what does it do it takes the people from a stage from from a stage to another stage any program that revolutionary that's revolutionary is an advancing program revolution is change honey if you just keep on changing before you know it in fact not even know Let me try to break it down to you. You say this brother here goes to school, eight, um, to school eight years to be an auto mechanic, and that the teacher he used to do to be an auto mechanic, he tells him, "Well, nigger, you you gotta go on what we call on the job training." And he says, "Damn, with all this theory I got, I gotta go on, go to on the job training. What for?" He said, "Oh."
Next time you hear these sounds, you better take apart the carburetor first. How did he learn? He learned through practice. I don't care how much theory you got. If it don't have any practice applied to it, then that theory happens to be irrelevant, right? Any theory you get, practice it. And when you practice it, you make some mistakes. When you make mistakes, you correct that theory. And then it will be corrected. It will be a corrected theory that will be able to be applied and used in any situation. That's what we got to be able to do. Every time I speak in church, I always try to say something, you know, about Martin Luther King. I have a lot of respect for Martin Luther King. I, I, excuse me. Excuse me. I think he was one of the greatest orators that this country has. And I listen to anyone who speaks well. Because I like to listen to that. Martin Luther King said that it might look dark sometimes. Here. And you think that, well, if they're not here, then it won't be as good as we thought it could have been. And maybe you thought that you need more people here than you have here. Get out of here. Yeah, get out. Maybe you thought the room was going to be packed with people, and maybe you thought you might have to turn something. I ain't saying later on. Well, if they're not here, then it won't be as good as we thought it could have been. And maybe you, if I tell you to get up out of here again, maybe some of the, and maybe you thought that you need more people here than you have there. Maybe you think that the pigs are going to be able to pressure you and put enough pressure to squash your movement even before it starts. But Martin Luther King said that he heard enough, can you see the stars? And we're not worried about it being dark. He said that the arm of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards heaven. We got Huey P. Newton in jail. We got Elder Cleaver underground. and. Al Prentice Bunch, Bunchy Carter has been murdered. Bobby Hutton and John Huggins been murdered. And a lot of people think that the Black Panther Party, in a sense, has given up. But let us say this, that we made the kind of commitment to the people that are hardly Maybe we could be on the mountaintop. Maybe we wouldn't have to be hiding when we go to speak places like this. Maybe we wouldn't have to worry about court cases and going to jail and being sick. We say that even though all of those luxuries exist on the mountaintop, we understand that you people and
support Simba or Simpson. Um, it's never too late to support 